I'm Ron Erickson, and this is Project Synchro. Said I'm Steve Menendez. Uh, this is my 1984 Dodge Rampage that we're sitting in front of tonight. Uh, uh, Ron Erickson came down to help out with the project a little bit. Uh, you know, the background on this, there's kind of a, uh, there's a remote tie-in to Project Synchro. Uh, you know, I've been a fan of Ron's videos and Kyle's videos on the Project Synchro. Uh, this Rampage is set up for land speed racing. Uh, we're using a Volkswagen a 1.5 liter turbo diesel engine. Uh, it's probably making about 200 horsepower right now. And we are the uh, record holders in both the uh, ECTA, that's at the Ohio mile, at like 136 miles an hour there. And also the record holders on the Bonneville Salt Flats, which is, you know, the granddaddy of them all, at just over 135 miles an hour. Now, when we set that 135 record, we probably had about 170 horsepower. Since then, we've bumped that up to about 200, which is where we were at uh, when we ran at Ohio. And for this year, we probably won't make a whole lot more power, but we've switched around to a five-speed transmission, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to go faster. We'll make a little more boost. We've got a little more fuel, and we're just gonna try to go as fast as we can, and certainly appreciate the help uh, of guys like you who have a lot of Volkswagen knowledge, so we're pouring a lot of Volkswagen knowledge into a Dodge Rampage truck. Yeah, we're in, uh, in Festus, Missouri, here in my three-car garage uh, attached to the house. You know, been uh, working on this truck. I think I bought it in 2011, I believe. We brought it home, found it on the side of the road. I actually uh, left a note on on the driver's seat of a rampage that I saw sitting dead on the side of the road. And a couple days later, the guy called me up and said, "Hey, you left a note in my rampage." And uh, so I, you know, that following weekend, I went and picked it up. And 500 bucks later, I dragged it home and a spare engine and a bunch of extra parts, which we ended up not using at all, and tore it all down and started building it into, you know, got the, the rule book for land speed racing in Bonneville and started building it to the rule book, so. I think the first transmission that Kendall did for me was a, an 0205 speed, which I had him build and then I never used. It, it sat by the wayside because in the meantime, between when that was built and the time that we first ran at Bonneville, you know, I, I knew that the five speeds were kind of weak and I came up with enough four speed parts to have a transmission put together that had essentially the same overall top gear as the five speed would have had and we all judged that it was gonna be a stronger transmission with the four speed. So I had Kendall build that transmission uh, which was the, the combination between the Dodge Omni 020 version and one of the, uh, the diesel spec 020 four speeds, which is uh, a really tall fourth gear. It's like 0.7 to one fourth gear. So that's how that, you know, the, the first time I went, met Kendall and the second time I met Kendall was he was building, tran helping rebuild transmissions for this thing. So I started out, uh, there were, there's, I had some advantage because there was another guy who at the time was working on a Dodge Rampage for another land speed racing uh, record attempt, not in the same class. So, but, and I had seen pictures of his cage and it was all done by a professional race shop in North Carolina somewhere. So I kind of stole a lot of the ideas for how the cage was laid out and then uh, through the landracing.com message board, you know, there were I started a build thread on there, a lot of good input from other guys in the land speed racing community about how to do things and it came around to the cage and I thought, okay, I'm gonna cut the holes in the floor pan and drop the legs of the cage through and do it the way that you see a lot of them done. And then uh, several guys said, no, why don't, why don't you cut the roof off? And uh, I was like, cut the roof off? He said, yeah, you know, cut, cut it at the, at the A pillars and, and make a little template uh, so that you get it, get it all back together right and then cut through the B pillars 
and make like a Z cut so that when it all fits back together, you, you're pretty much sure it's back in the right place. And I did that and welded some reinforcements in the door opening so that it wouldn't want to fold up when I had it apart. And it definitely made the cage fabrication a lot easier. I probably had it in and out of the car 10 times using the cherry picker. There's a lot of steel. I think there's, there's close to 200 feet of, of tubing in the cage, uh, including the down bars to the back and everything that ties it together. So it's a, uh, there's a lot of tubing in there and it's an inch and five eighths, like 134 wall, really heavy mild steel tubing. And uh, I bent it at work on a modified Harbor Freight bender and uh, notched it w with uh, hole saws in a, uh, a, a lathe. I made a fixture to hold the, the tubing on the compound slide of the lathe. And then I ch had a, an arbor that I'd chuck up in the, in the chuck on the lathe and notch all the tubes and I'd fit them together and bring them home kind of a couple at a time and tack it all together and you know adjust the fit as I needed to. Made the cage and then kind of welded it Welded the cage into the car and then welded the roof back on. 2016 plans, uh, we've got two events scheduled. Uh, the first one is uh, the Ohio Mile meet, uh, which is in uh, Wilmington, Ohio, at the end of April, first weekend in May. And that's also the, uh, the Hot Rod Magazine Top Speed Challenge, so they'll get a lot of media coverage at that event. And we'll be running the, the same 1.5 liter engine uh, with the five-speed transmission this time, heavier duty clutch, more turbo boost, more fuel, and we'll try to, uh, I'd like to see the high side of 140 miles an hour at Ohio in, at the end of April. And then our plan is to come home and immediately, when we get it home, start tearing the front end of this thing apart. Uh, so we're gonna take the engine out, take the transmission out, uh, core support, radiator, the nose, all of it off and start laying it, uh, getting set up to run a different engine and transmission at Bonneville in September. And that'll be a two liter, 16 valve Mercedes engine. So we'll go up in, in class from the 1.5 liter to the two liter engine class. And we're, we'll try to get the record at Bonneville in September with that two liter engine. So that's, those are kind of the two deadlines we're working towards in 2016. Uh, right now we're in a mild scramble just to make sure that everything gets done before the end of April. So that's, uh, you know, I've got a checklist of items and hopefully a thought of everything along the way uh, to get a replumb the turbo. Uh, we're still working on getting the, really the transmission's all bolted in, but the, the drive shafts, the starter, uh, the clutch slave cylinder, all the plumbing for uh, going from a, cable operated clutch to the hydraulic clutch setup that we need for the O2A transmission, uh, getting the shifter mounted and figured out inside the, the cabin of the truck. Uh, those are the kind of things that we're working on right now to try to get, uh, get ready for the Ohio Mile in, uh, at the end of April. So the name of the channel is uh, KHM, that's King, Hake, and Menendez. Salty Frog Racing. So uh, that's uh, the three guys, Ken King, Daryl Hake, and myself, Steve Menendez. And uh, we're a, a LLC team that we formed uh, to, rate, to promote uh, this Salty Frog, this uh, Dodge Rampage land speed racing truck. And Ken King has a uh, Spec Racer Ford, an SRF, a little sports car, race car. So. We put both cars under the umbrella of King Hake and Menendez. Uh, so KHM, Salty Frog Racing, and I created the YouTube channel to document uh, our efforts to keep going faster. Uh, continuous improvement, try to go you know, one step at a time, go a little bit faster, make sure uh, everything's done as well as we can do it, stay safe and uh, try to share the information with people, like-minded people who might be interested in uh, having a look at, at our YouTube channel. The videos look fantastic, the audio is great, uh, the editing is great, you know, the soundtrack is great, everything about it, the Project Synchro videos is 
you know, I feel like I'm kind of trying to rip you guys off by copying the style, but it's really, really excellent stuff that you're doing. We're kind of ripping other people off, right? <laughs>